All right, guys, now let's take a look at question four of the November 2022 paper one exam paper. And question 4.1 reads as follows. It says, sketched below is the graph of h of x equals 1 over x plus p plus q. The asymptotes of h intersect at the point where x is 1 and y is 2. Okay, you can see that beautiful graph over there. All right, cool. So now 4.1.1 is asking us to write down the values of P and Q. Now, you can be a little bit confused here because of what the function was given as originally and what is happening in the drawing. So what you need to do is always look at the graph versus the picture. Okay, we are comparing those two things. Now, the equation, if I'm comparing the two here, if I'm comparing the two, what you see in the picture, as far as the asymptote of x is concerned, needs to be an opposite sign compared to what you see on the equation. So I can tell you now that the equation is supposed to read h of x equals 1 over x minus 1 plus 2. Why am I saying minus 1? Is because I'm looking at plus 1 in the picture. Okay? It's easy for you to get a little bit confused when you're dealing with this. Okay? Always know what I'm looking at in the picture versus what I'm looking at in the equation, right? Have to be opposite times when it comes to the x value of the asymptote. Now, in this case, since the equation was originally given to us as h of x is x plus p, it implies that if I rewrite it in that form, I'm actually sitting with 1 over x plus negative 1 plus 2. Because that's how you're going to get your negative 1. Again, picture versus equation. The x value that you see on the asymptote for the picture has to be an opposite sign to what you see in the equation. Since it's plus 1 in the picture, it has to be minus 1 in the equation. And since the equation was given to us as x plus p, it means it's x plus a negative 1, which implies that p will be minus 1. And q, of course, the y asymptote, is 2. There's no confusions about that one. So I can quickly say P is negative 1 and Q is positive 2. Go to the next one. They're asking us to calculate the coordinates of the x-intercept. Like again for the x-intercept, that will happen when y equals to 0. So y equals to 0 at the x-intercept. So, so now I'm sitting with 0, 1 over x take away 1, we're adding with 2, subtract 2 on both sides of the equation. I'm going to get negative 2 is 1 over x minus 1. And then I'm multiplying both sides by x minus 1. So I'm going to get negative 2 into x minus 1 equals to 1. And um, we're going to end up with negative 2x. Add it with 2 is equal to 1. So negative 2x equals to negative 1. We're going to subtract 2 on both sides of the equation. So your x comes out as just one half. All right. Therefore, the x intercept the coordinates. And remember, we need to write it in point form. So it's very important for you to understand that if you don't write it in point form, we might be offended by that. And we express our disappointments by taking marks. Okay. So very important for us to understand that we need to express this in point form. The answer becomes a half as well as zero. Now, the next question is asking something very interesting. They're saying to us, Write down the coordinates, x coordinates of the x intercept of g if g of x is h of x plus 3. We are looking for the x intercept of the graph of g, and the graph of g is the graph of h moved somehow. So, what does this really mean? So, this means uh, h is moved. How many units? Three units. In which direction? Again, opposite direction, not to the right, but left. Okay, if it's a plus, you go left, not right. If it was a minus, it will imply to be going to the right. So kind of like opposite to what logic would actually expect you to do. Okay, so I'm looking at h of x plus 3. That implies that h is moved 3 units left. Now, what did we have as the x coordinate of the graph of h? We had the x intercept of h as a half and zero. Now, I want to move this thing three units left, okay? So I'm literally shifting everything left by three. 
Now that means if you move the whole thing left by three, the only thing changing is the X coordinate, but the Y coordinate stays the same. Check whatever you have, you go one, two, three left, all right? Let's see how that is going to look as the X value, okay? So the X intercept of the graph of G, okay? Of G of X will be the half you had, we're moving it three units left. That implies you're subtracting three on it. And it becomes the only thing that is changing, but you're not changing the Y coordinate. And I promise you, a half ticking away, three gives you negative five halves. So negative five over two is to zero, will be the X intercept of that graph, but they were only asking you for the X coordinate. Therefore, the answer there is going to be just negative uh, <coughs> five over two, excuse me. Right, that's going to be the answer. Not the whole thing, because they're just asking for the X coordinate, very important. Now the next question is asking us to find the equations of the axis of symmetry of H, uh, because here they're saying to us the equation of an axis of symmetry of H is Y equals to X plus T. We wanna find the value of T. So we're just trying to find out what is the T value in this equation. Right, now, what do you have to remember? Well, you have to remember the following, between the asymptotes, okay? Between the asymptotes. The graph here, uh, <coughs> in this case, happens to be in which quadrant? It happens to be in this quadrant one here and quadrant three of the asymptotes. This is what our graph looks like. They want us to find the equation of the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a line that divides the graph into two equal pieces. This graph doesn't have one, but it has two of them. The green one, which is the increasing one. Okay, and the blue one, which is the decreasing one. So these are the two lines of symmetry. The blue one will be y equals to mx plus c, but again, the gradient will always be one or negative one. Since it's decreasing, it will be negative one x plus c. The increasing one, which is the green one, is given by y equals to mx plus c. It's a line. All lines have this equation, but the gradient, like I said, is one or negative one since it's increasing. We're expecting it to be a plus one plus c, okay? One x plus c. Which one are they talking about? They're definitely talking about the increasing one because our gradient is one there. You can clearly see that our m is positive one, so they're basically talking about the increasing one. Now, the key thing here is it doesn't matter whether you're talking about the decreasing or the increasing axis of symmetry. The point where this graph passes, or those two lines pass, or where they meet, is where the asymptotes intersect. And from the given equation, I think you'll agree with me that we were told that the asymptotes there, they meet each other at the point where y is 2 and x is 1. We're just interested in finding the equation of this line here. Okay? Very important. So y is 2, x is 1. That's what I'm going to sub in the equation to try and find what the equation is going to be. Okay, sweet. So I'm just going to say, okay, well, I'm interested in finding that. So y equals to x plus c. My y is 2. My x is 1. I'm looking for c. So I'm going to get 2 minus 1, which is 1 equals to c. Therefore, by the look of things, it looks like the equation of the axis of symmetry, the green one, is just going to be equal to x added with the number 1. Now they're asking for t, and t is literally taking the position of c, therefore I can conclude there that t is going to be equal to 1. And this is how you would do this question that involves uh, the lines of symmetry. Now the last question, 4.1.5 says we need to determine the values of x for which negative 2 is smaller or equal to 1 over x minus 1. Now it's very difficult for you to see what is going on here, okay, until you realize that you're actually still working with your uh, original function. Now, if I add two on both sides, if I add two on the left and add two on the right hand side, because I'm just trying to see what they're saying about the graph. And if I have my graph, I can be able to do better analysis than looking at this thing algebraically. There are people who will say to you, you need to multiply both sides by the LCD. And that's a flaw because X is an unknown. In an inequality question, you do not multiply both sides by an unknown if the unknown is a denominator. Because then, if that, in, that unknown was negative, the sign will have to change direction. So we don't know whether x is positive or negative, so it will be a flaw for us to multiply both sides by x minus 1 to try and get rid of the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 on both sides of the equation. When I add 2 on both sides, I end up with 0 equals to 1 over x minus 1 is added with 2 as well. Now, but look at that. 
Hmm? What is that? Is that not our graph? Yes, that is our graph. So we are currently sitting with x, uh, 0 is less or equals to the graph because 1 over x minus 1 plus 2 is basically our graph. So in words, what does this actually mean? In words, this simply means we want to know uh, where our graph is bigger than 0. Okay? In words, it literally implies 0 less than or equals to means below the graph. Okay, very simple. Now, where is zero below the graph? The other way of writing the same thing is to say we are looking where the graph is above zero. That's actually a better way of looking at it, right? We are looking where uh, the graph is above zero. I'm just going to explicitly write this in words. We want where the graph is above zero, which means that is where the graph is positive. Okay, very simple. We want to know where the graph is positive. And these words are very important because they are, they'll help you to understand how to analyze these kinds of questions. I added two, I get the graph, uh, and now I want to know where is zero below the graph, that's less than or equal to the graph, which can be written as the graph above zero, which implies the graph positive, okay? So we want to know where the graph is positive. So let's go and look at it and try and find where is this graph positive. So allow me to delete what we have so far. Okay, I'm going to delete this stuff that we have here so that we have space to actually do analysis. Okay, cool. So what do we know so far? We know that this number here is a half. Okay, that x value is a half. Now, graphs are above, above zero graphs are positive. A graph will be positive as long as it's above the x-axis. And a graph is negative if it's below the x-axis. And remember, positivity and negativity, in this case, implies the values of y. And the graph is just y. Now, if I had to put signage on this, I would say this graph is positive for all these parts here because it is above and it will never even go below the asymptote. So since the asymptote caps it and stops it from going below 2, I can tell you without any doubt that this will always be positive no matter what. Now, if I'm looking here, this part is positive at least for this part until it gets to half, then it goes below and starts to be negative. So it is positive here, yeah, positive, 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 positive. You're happy about it. It's above the x-axis. Okay, but then it gets to half, it becomes zero, and then we start having a problem. Because after that, then it starts to be negative. What is the question asking us to find? Well, we are interested in finding the values where the graph is positive. We want to know where the graph is above zero. So where is the graph positive? Where is the graph greater than zero? Where is the graph greater than zero? That is where the graph is positive. Let's go back and look at it. It is positive for all the x values on the left of this number here. So from here and half going back. So from half going backwards, our graph is positive for all those x values. And then after the asymptote, you see from here at one going to the right, the graph is positive again because it's positive for all that top piece that you're looking at there. Remember, we're just interested in the x values. So the only time the graph is negative is between half and one. If you look at half to one, from half to one, that is the only part where the graph is negative. So I have to tell them where the graph is positive. So it's all these x values going back, the graph is positive. And all these values on the right of the number one, going from one to the right, the graph is positive. The only time it's going to be negative is between half and one. So I'm just going to say, OK, all x values accept this part. And how do you say that? Well, you can say all x values before and including half or x values after one. That is going to be our answer. Why am I including half? They said less or equal to. And at half, it is equal to zero. Where am I not a including for one? Because one is an asymptote and the graph will never reach the number one because one is the asymptote as far as the x is concerned. Okay, very important. And that beautiful people will be my solution. X is less than, okay? Graph is going to be positive for all values that are smaller than half, okay? That's the first part, or, or that's the fancy weight for all, by the way, okay? Or all X values that are up after one. Be careful, excluding one there, because one is an asymptote, uh, and then including half, because half uh, happens to be what we call uh, the point where the graph is equal to zero because that is where this graph happens to cut the x axis. Very powerful. Okay, now we go to the next part, which is question 4.2. 4.2 reads as follows. It says the graph of f of x equals to x squared minus 4x minus 5 and 
g of x equals to a times 2 to the x plus q are sketched below. E and H are the x-intercepts of H, of F. C is the y-intercept of F and lies on the asymptote of G. The two graphs intersect at D, the turning point of F. Okay, very important information. All right, cool. So first question says we need to write down the y-coordinate of C. Now, what is the y-coordinate? So remember, we were given the equation y equals 2 for uh, our quadratic function, aka the parabola x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay, x squared minus 4x minus 5. Uh, C will be the last number there, which is the uh, y-intercept. It's going to be minus 5. So 0 is to minus 5 will be the value of the y-intercept. And you can clearly see there it's actually in the right place. So I can tell you without any doubt that that's going to be uh, 0 is to negative 5. And I, ca I can be able to tell you that because it's always going to be the constant value. If you make x 0, all the terms disappear. The only surviving term is negative 5, which tells us that c will have coordinates 0 and negative 5. We now need to determine the coordinates of the turning point. Okay, the coordinates of the turning point, uh, d, because they told us that d is the turning point. So if you go back and you try and figure out what the coordinates of the turning point are going to be, d is the turning point. So for the turning point, d, it has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. How do you work out the x coordinates at the turning point? x is equal to negative b divided by 2a. That is negative of negative 4 divided by 2 times a, which is 1. I'm getting an x value of the turning point coming out as exactly uh, the number 2. Yes, it's going to be 2. So I'm getting 2 here. Okay, I'm going to put 2 here. And the y coordinate, you're going to sub. So y coordinate at the turning point, you sub in the original function, okay? What do you get when you sub in the original function? You're going to get x squared. You just want to find out what is y when x is uh, equal to 2, okay? And then I've got 5. That's a 4. Take away 8, you get negative 4. You subtracting 5 from that, you're going to end up with negative 9 as the y-coordinate to the turning point. And that's how we end up with d as 2 and negative 9 working out the turning point coordinates of a quadratic function. Now, the one asked to find the value of a and q. So what is the given equation? Well, we were told what the equation of the graph that happens to be an exponential function is. Okay, we know that. And we are very happy about knowing the fact that we are given the asymptote to be passing through the point where c cuts the y-axis as far as the parabola is concerned. So let's go back and look at it. So we are looking at the dotted line. This dotted line happens to be the asymptote. And the asymptote has the equation y equals to negative 5 because it is passing through c. We were told that it is passing through the point c. OK. Now I'm going to write the equation back. OK. Which equation are we writing? Well, I'm going to start, first of all, by coping out, coping down uh, the equation of g, a times 2 to the x plus q, all right? So let's copy that down and use it to find what the answer is going to be. So we know for a fact that the equation is y equals to a times 2 to the x, and then we're adding that with q. So this here gives you the asymptote. That's where the asymptote is going to come from. Okay, if that is the asymptote, we know for a fact that it is negative 5. So we can tell uh, the examiner that the q value is definitely going to be negative 5. Now that I know, I can be able to say, okay, well, let's now try and find what the value of a is going to be. I've got 2 to the x, and I am adding 5. I'm negative 5, which is going to be minus 5. Now I need a point to substitute for x and y so that I can be able to solve my equation. It turns out that the graph passes through point D. Let me show you. It's passing through this point here. Okay, that's where the graph is passing. And we know the coordinates of d are simply 2 as well as negative 9. So I'm going to steal those and use them as x and y in order to find what the equation is going to be, of course, after finding the value of a. So y is negative 9, a is unknown, x happens to be 2. We are subtracting 5. If you add 5 on both sides of the equation, you are going to end up with negative 4 equals to 4a, and that's your a value is going to come out as exactly negative 1. OK. Now, uh, the last question is asking something very interesting. OK, those are q values and the a value. Uh, they're saying to us, we need to write down the range of g. It's actually not the last question. They want us to write the range of g. So range is asking us to work out the values of y. Now, if I just quickly steal the graph, it is 
having an asymptote at y equals to negative 5 and it's appearing below that line, okay? Maybe we can draw a better one, okay? That one looks ugly. Um, <coughs> it's an exponential graph, so it must curve nicely and look like an exponential graph, okay? Very closer to the asymptote, but not touching, of course. This is how the graph looks. So where is the graph defined as far as the y-axis is concerned? So this graph doesn't go above negative 5. Think about it. It only ends at negative 5, okay? If you look at it, it's like a, a roof here. This is the roof that it ever gets to. It gets to this here and doesn't go be beyond that. So the graph is only below that number, minus 5. So I can then say to these people, the range is going to be easy to work out because I can see my graph does not go above negative 5. So the graph is only defined below negative 5, okay? So from negative 5 to infinity, if you don't like that, you can write it this way. You can say y is the element of, it starts at negative infinity. Pay attention to the bracket that I'm using. It's not a square bracket because it will not get to infinity. Similarly, it will not get to negative 5. So I'm going to use uh, a round parenthesis as well to avoid the number negative 5 because the graph is not defined at negative 5 since negative 5 is an asymptote. So for infinities and asymptotes, you will always use these round brackets. Now in closing, the last question says we need to determine the values of k for which the value of f of x minus k will always be positive. So let's try and transfer that from, math to, to Eng from English to math. Okay, what did they see? They said to us f of x minus k, right? f of x minus k will always, okay, be positive. What does that mean? That means f of x minus k will be greater than zero. What does that mean? That means f of x will be greater than k. Want to add k on both sides of the equation. Now, what does that mean? That means we want where the parabola, which is the graph of f, will be above some line y equals to k. Okay? A line y equals to k. This is the line that we need to talk about. Okay? The line y equals to k. So we want where the parabola is above a line y equals to k, which, which happens to be a horizontal line. Very important for me to add that. Not just a line by a horizontal line. Because it's a constant. k is a number. For example, if k is 1, like if you're looking at the graph of y equals to 1, if k is 1, that means you want where the graph is above the line y equals 1, okay? It's going to be a horizontal line that cuts the graph, that cuts the y-axis at 1. This is what the graph of y equals to 1 would look like, okay? So we want to know what this k value is that will help us to achieve this. Now, let's go and look at what the parabola looks like, okay? I'm just going to take that little piece uh, just the graph alone, the parabola looks like this, okay, from the given equation, from the given graphs, the picture, and we know that it's turning here at the point where y is negative 9. And I'm interested in here, grade 12 is only on the turning point, because that's actually where uh, the important things are actually going to happen. The turning point is at negative 9, it's cutting y at um, negative 5, okay, and then there's x's as well, so I'm not really interested in the x values, so I'm just going to draw the y-axis, just the y-axis, and I want us to focus on the y-axis. So look at the y-axis. What do we know about the y-axis? We know that the graph is passing here at negative 5. We know that the graph is turning here at negative 9, okay? That's where it's turning. So the line I'm talking about of y equals to k, okay, I'm going to draw it green. Here's the green line, okay? That's the line y equals to k. So I want to highlight this line, and I hope this uh, is going to actually allow me to play around with this line. So look at the line, look at the line. Here's the line, right? At the moment, the line has the equation y equals to some number that is below negative 9. We want the parabola to be above this line. And at the moment, based on where it is at the current moment, the parabola is above my line. But once I start moving the line up, 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 we've got a problem. That line intersects the parabola twice, okay? It's intersecting the parabola in two places. There's parts where the parabola is above the line, and there's parts where the parabola is below the line. And the question says we want the parabola to be above the line all the time. So if I want the parabola to be above the line all the, all the time, this line has to go down, 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 down. And the smallest thing it can ever get to is at negative 9. And when it's at negative 9, it means the parabola will touch it. It will be equal to it. It's still not above it. They said above it. That means this line has to be any number smaller than negative 9. So anywhere here, it will work. You can put it anywhere you like below negative 9. 
this is going to work. So when k is in a number smaller than negative 9, we're going to get what we want. Like y equals to negative 10, y equals to negative 11, y equals to negative, all of those lines will make sense. The parabola will be above all of them. Okay, so k has to be any number that is smaller than negative 9. And this is how you interpret these kinds of questions so it's a very powerful way of interpreting this. It has to be any, any, any value below negative 9. Then the parabola will always be above that particular line, which in this case they've named a constant k. Alright, so uh, that's, that's the end of this awesome question. And this is how you would analyse questions such as this one, which happens to be question 4.2 in this case.